families have been systematically targeted by radical Muslims. Their lives are filled with molestation, starvation, and even death. Thousands of children have been kidnapped and sold as slaves to Muslim households in the north. Fleeing for their lives, Sudanese Christians have forsaken all earthly possessions. Their only hope being a loving savior, for whose name they suffer some of the worst persecution since the days of the apostles. As Christians, we have two choices. We can turn away from these horrific situations facing our Sudanese brothers and sisters, or we can run to help. While watching the joy on their faces as they sing unto God, it is hard to imagine the sufferings they endure. In a day of mass transit and communication, they have been forgotten by much of the world. Displaced within their own country, they look to the cross and press on to a higher calling. They are a part of our family, a part of today's persecuted church. Since Muslim forces seized Sudan in 1989, millions of Christian families have fallen victim to the brutal treatment inflicted by an Islamic front set on jihad, the Islamic holy war. Dr. Hassan Al-Tarabi, leader of Sudan's Muslim Brotherhood, is responsible for a regime which in the last seven years has taken the lives of over two million Sudanese including countless Christians. With strong emphasis on the military and fundamentalist Islamic propaganda, al Tarabi has quietly turned Sudan into the latest hotbed of Islamic fanaticism. They don't mind fighting. I mean, they go and die. They don't mind doing anything. I mean, for Islam. And I'm sure that the, the, those who are in power would like the, to stop this movement uh, uh, have, have no future, whatever. With the continued onslaught and destruction of entire villages by government troops, many Christians have fled to the south, where SPLA soldiers offer localized protection. But the suffering continues. Without proper food, medical attention, or clean drinking water, many succumb to deadly diseases or simply die from starvation. However, these are the fortunate ones. Sudanese Christians who remain in occupied areas or in the Nuba Mountains face cruelties beyond description. Church leaders are specifically targeted. Pastors have been thrown into dry wells and soaked with gasoline before being set on fire. Joseph, a Sudanese Christian from the Nuba area, was forced into his church after it had been set ablaze. His hands have been burned beyond recognition. In 1992, we were in church praying when the government's army came and besieged the church. They caught the priest Mata and slaughtered him. Asia also fell victim to the Muslims when she was taken hostage. Her hands and feet had been securely tied, leaving her defenseless against their lewd treatment. I was taken by soldiers and tied down. I was attacked by government soldiers and taken to the barracks. I refused them. I was tied up. These are the wounds of the ropes. Christian boys kidnapped from the villages are confined to an Islamic school where they are made to study the Arabic language and memorize the entire Quran. Rising for prayers before dawn and studying until the late hours of the night, they are indoctrinated into the strict teachings of the Islamic faith. Those who refuse to cooperate are beaten and chained until they improve their studies. They must give up playing. Playing is harmful. It doesn't allow them time to study. Anyone who misbehaves, he's whipped so that he doesn't play anymore. When his colleagues see him being whipped, he will stop playing and become afraid. The Quran is difficult. If they do not work hard, they will not be able to memorize it all. A lot of the footage that we have received from these nations, some in Sudan, show uh, young boys being beaten, uh, show them chained, walking down these dusty paths around the school compound with chains. In one school, they have to write on a small board that they carry with them uh, Quranic verses, 
and then wash this board and drink the water. And their teachers tell them that drinking this water causes them or helps them to memorize this faster. Young girls have also been kidnapped and sold as concubines or given over to the sexual pleasures of the Islamic soldiers. Girls as young as nine have been repeatedly violated. Tens of thousands of children have disappeared, hidden away by radical Muslims seeking to create a new generation void of any Christian faith. Christian men who refuse to submit to the Islamic movement have been imprisoned, beaten, and oftentimes mutilated. Others have been hung, nailed to trees, or drowned in the River Nile. This woman's breast was cut off by the soldiers as a reminder to her and her small child of what lies ahead for those who refuse to convert to the Muslim faith. While Islamic forces proclaim a national salvation, little is being done to avert such cruelties. But as a member of Christ's body, you can make a difference. You can send a message of love and encouragement to these Christian families who have lost all for the sake of Christ. Sudan is a unique situation where we can fly into a, a nation that is still under the foot of Islam that doesn't really permit a lot of religious freedom for Christians, yet it is so vast we can still go in there and help these people. So in one sense they're refugees, and in another sense they're spiritual refugees, moral refugees. They're being cut off, annihilated, or trying to be cut off because of their faith in Christ. This is because of the stand they're taking for the Lord Jesus, not simply because a, a military government has a a racial or a political vendetta against them, but because of their faith and as such they are our brothers and sisters. Through Mission Sudan, the voice of the martyrs is now assisting Sudanese families with care packages called life packs containing quality essentials for everyday living. Each life pack contains cooking utensils, plates and cups, water purification tablets, a five gallon water container, mosquito netting and practical gardening tools. These care packages include what a Sudanese family needs, not only for the present day, but equips them for life. They transform the daily life of a Sudanese family by providing the means of preparing food, nights of rest without the barrage of disease-carrying insects, and the necessary tools to cultivate one's own food. Life packs address much more than the physical needs of Sudanese Christians. A Bible in their native language is included to help alleviate the spiritual hunger and provide the indispensable means of evangelism. This outreach equips our Sudanese brothers and sisters for this day and for eternity. Through the initial phase of Mission Sudan, the Voice of the Martyrs hopes to provide 10,000 life packs to Sudanese refugees in and around Sudan. But we cannot do it alone. We need concerned Christians to help. Christians who will show our Sudanese family that they are not forgotten, that they are in our prayers, and that we will do everything in our power to fellowship with them in their sufferings. These people are our brothers and sisters. If you have a tooth, toothache, your whole head hurts. If uh, you hit your thumb with a hammer, your whole arm or body hurts. Christ invites us into his fellowship of sufferings. I think that's a rich area of Christianity that at times is misunderstood. Uh, in America, but by uh, fellowshipping with these brothers and sisters in Sudan, we enter into their fellowship of sufferings. We enter into the body of Christ, and uh, someday we'll rejoice with them in heaven. You can sponsor a life pack for a Sudanese family for only $45. To sponsor your life pack, simply call the Voice of the Martyrs at 1-800-747-0085 or send check or money order to The Voice of the Martyrs, Mission Sudan, P.O. Box 443, Bartlesville, Oklahoma, 74005.